All right. Greetings to everyone who joined us today. Uh, my name is Mohamed Kazanov, and I'm business development lead at Axonsoft, responsible for APAC region. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure to see such an attendance. Uh, I see that people all over the world, not only APAC with us. And the topic we are covering today is very hot. Uh, it's AI or neural network technology in the digital surveillance industry. And I hope with the help of our global technology partners who are so kind to join us today, we'll be able to cover uh, it as much and uh, as broad as possible, even though according to the format, each of us will have around 15 minutes for their part. Uh, so we also have our colleagues uh, answering your questions in the chat during the presentation and after each presenter done with their part, we'll pick a few more questions uh, to respond by presenters themselves. Okay, I would like to thank our uh, global uh, technology partners, uh, Intel, Dale and Seagate for joining us. Uh, we'll do a short intro and start from Eric Wong from Intel. Hi, Eric. Hi, Mohamed. Good afternoon or good morning to some of you here. So uh, thank you. Thanks for your invitation. I believe most of us are working from home. Yes, uh, I am a sales specialist in Intel. My role uh, is to accelerate the future of computer vision with our partner live here today in Asia Pacific. Thank you. Back to you, Mohamed. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Eric, for joining us. Uh, next presenter is Harjit Raki from Dell. Hello, Harjit. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the invitation to co-present uh, in today's webinar. I uh, am the general manager for Digital Cities, uh, leading our sales globally for our smart cities business based out of Singapore, um, and work very closely with Axonsoft, one of our uh, one of our partners, uh, to develop what we call customer-ready solutions to take them to market. So, we'll talk more about that. So, thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank you very much, Harjit. And uh, we have Danny Lim uh, from CG today. Hello, Danny. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. I'm Danny. Um, I'm the head of global business development for video surveillance segment in Seagate. Um, thanks for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be able to share with you more about our, our story solution. OK, thank you very much, Danny. So uh, our session is called the Intelligent Video Management Software, and the main topic is neural network-based video analytics. Um, I'll start my presentation, and during my presentation, I'll do a short theoretical introduction to provide a general understanding of what a neural network is, how it is uh, basically created and prepared, and uh, the difference between a neural network and a classical computer vision algorithm. <clears throat> okay, I will. Uh, also cover some common terminology and show different uh, neural network methods uh, we already have and problems we can solve using uh, you know these methods. Okay. So uh, as mentioned before, neural networks have gained a lot of attention in the security industry for its potential. At the same time, all the uh, marketing and a hype around neural network approach or AI and its various components can lead many to expect an immediate miracle from AI enhanced video analytics. And uh, this sometimes um, creates some, some unrealistic expectations. So today we would like to talk and show what is possible with the current technological capabilities. Uh, all right, so uh, basically over the past few months, our company developed and trained around uh, 50 neural network detectors tailored for individual customers. So we're quite experienced in this field. Uh, the neural network approach, the software is provided with the data and told uh, that uh, this data represents something as a, for example, as a human. Let me play the video. Uh, so as you can see on the video, uh, how this is how regular detector works comparing to the neural network based. It's a human detection. Uh, on this video, you can see uh, that basic detector detects uh, every, uh, you know, different objects where neural based, uh, neural -based uh, detector very accurately separates cases with the human uh, when it's being detected. Uh, neural based uh, detection has a better understanding of characteristics uh, that define learned uh, objects instead of uh, relying on expectation of basic appearance. And this helps to classify objects much more accurately in a challenging conditions. And uh, so once again, the logics of neural networks is that it provided with a large number of images of human, for example, uh, 
in various environments and uh, an image where there are no human or uh, maybe other objects like maybe dogs or cats. A neural network then changes and adapts through this process and as a result uh, we get an algorithm presented as a neural network that uh, takes an image as an input and tells if there is a human on it. Uh, and also, yeah, it also it's very important to understand that uh, after training a neural network on a data set from uh, one client uh, side, we cannot predict and guarantee with the full confidence that it will perform as well in a different environment uh, because conditions under which this detector was trained may be very different from those uh, where this detector is being applied. So uh, the only way to find out is to try and uh, if the performance is not up to customers' expectations, uh, basically uh, do an extra training uh, under new conditions. So uh, we went even uh, further with neural networks, uh, detecting not only human, but their posture. And the most uh, recent addition to, to a powerful set of AI tools used in our VMS is uh, behavioral analytics or we can simply call it skeletons. Uh, as I said, it allows detecting uh, you know, specific pose. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, first projects that we implemented with skeletons uh, was for the bank. Uh, basically, the customer wanted to know when, uh, uh, when someone was trying to break uh, into an ATM machine. They provided us with a video where Burglar was trying to open ATM cutting it with the angle grinder. Uh, so we reviewed several other footages and found a common thing or called feature by which we can detect when uh, there was a burglary attempt. The burglar would sit. Uh, you know, not down, down next to the ATM machine. Um, you, know, you know, usually bank uh, customers do not sit there, especially at night, except for, you know, maybe homeless, uh, whom the bank also requested, by the way, to detect. Uh, so we use sitting person neural detector based on skeletons uh, to trigger an alarm, an alarm and notify security guards as soon as someone sits next to the ATM. And uh, we realize this problem is quite common for banks around the world as we are getting more requests, uh, you know, at this moment. Uh, and we even have a few POCs running right now. Other examples or key scenarios where customers can use behavioral analytics include person fall down detection or raised arm detection, indicating there is a uh, potential armed person there. And uh, recently, we have also used skeletons to detect social distancing compliance. Uh, due to the situation with COVID-19. So, you know, many useful applications are possible with a neural network uh, uh, and uh, neural network-based behavioral analytics. Okay, uh, so on this slide, uh, you can see another example of neural network detector where you can detect fire uh, and smoke. And let me uh, play the video. So here, uh, as you obviously see, we don't use any physical fire or smoke uh, detectors. It's uh, based on AI video detection. Uh, this video is from another real project. And here, PDZ cameras uh, were mounted on top of cell phone towers with the configured presets. Um, operators is immediately notified if smoke is detected. The system basically was tested using several uh, control fires, you know, with a lot of smoke coming from those fires. And in all cases, uh, fire was detected and recorded uh, very well. And uh, as a result, you know, the solution was approved and uh, installed. So uh, this is another uh, good example of object classification. Uh, object classification is an element of neural network training process and, uh, you know, uh, and follows a certain algorithm telling which class uh, the image belongs to. And uh, in this example here, a system decides if there is a smoke you know, or not. All right, so aside from, you know, just security matters, neural network analytics helps to increase workplace safety. Uh, in general, achieving safety by means of video surveillance system becomes a quite a very large segment of security industry. And uh, with the development of AI-based video detectors, we can satisfy common uh, and uncommon, uh, but nonetheless very important requests of our customers, you know, related to uh, workplace safety. Let me also play the video. So here on this uh, first video, you can see uh, helmet detection on the construction site. As you see, uh, one system detects person without safety helmet, uh, we're getting real time notification. And another example of utilization of neural network technologies for, uh, for, for safety reasons, 
basically a uh, affected uh, person in the airport without high vis vest. Uh, again, this is uh, all real projects, real deployments of our system uh, with a very positive uh, feedback from end customers. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, neural network is being used in such uh, popular technology nowadays as a facial recognition. So, uh, uh, you know, it turns out that the characteristics that seem uh, obvious for us humans, for example, eye color, uh, you know, they, they, don't, they don't make sense for a computer uh, analyzing individual pixels, uh, you know, on an image. And it was found that most uh, appropriate approach to enable the computer uh, to determine the characteristics that need to be collected. So neural network method allows much better and faster identification. So, uh, you know, with the AI-based facial recognition, our customers can very accurately identify people uh, by their video image. Uh, you know, system using, using neural network uh, logics compares captured by, uh, by a camera face with a digital template stored in a dedicated database. And uh, also with the face search option, it is possible to find similar faces in the archive quickly and uh, collect statistics on uh, their appearance in the scene uh, for various cameras. And uh, operators can upload the photo and uh, then search database for uh, similar faces. Uh, quite the same way works uh, license plate recognition, or uh, also called LPR. Uh, this technology provides capability to recognize vehicle license plates from a uh, light camera, as well as perform license plate search for uh, you know specific license plate uh, in the database. Uh, LPR can be used to, you know, for example, identify stolen or hijacked vehicles, you know, provide access control at some locations. Uh, or monitor, you know, important parking areas and, you know, many other uh, scenarios. Another interesting neural uh, network method that we're exploring is a semantic segmentation. So let me also uh, play a short video. Uh, this algorithm is basically designed to tell which pixels on a given image uh, belong to which part of a human body. Here, you know, as you can see, arms are colored uh, with the yellow, body is uh, blue, legs are pink, and uh, head is green. Uh, this method itself is quite universal, meaning that we can apply it not only to human uh, body parts, but also uh, train it, for example, to tell which part of the street image is a road or trees or building and, you know, and so on. So, you know, it can be applied in many different uh, ways. Um, so if uh, on previous slides, you could see more uh, real-time features, or I would call them uh, prevention tools. Now we, would, uh, we will review some uh, interesting and very effective investigating instruments. Uh, so on this slide, you see our smart forensic search feature, uh, and we call it MomentQuest. And searching in MomentQuest is quite fast because it's based on metadata, which are calculated for all moving objects in the field of view. And the metadata contain object attributes that are saved as text strings, uh, a special database, and at the same time uh, as a video itself. Let me show you a few examples uh, in cases how our smart search works. So uh, on this video, you can see that first we have, uh, we're going to pick, uh, uh, you know, a certain direction and search uh, all objects past the line uh, in, the, in this uh, basically given uh, direction. So once we do the search, we will immediately find all uh, thumbnails in the archive and we can go directly to archive, uh, you know, for uh, to search for the specific object. Um, so uh, after that, we, uh, we apply an extra filter check in the box human and system shows all the records for the people crossing the line in a given direction. There's no cars and no, uh, no other objects, only, you know, people there. So, uh, yeah, so the next filter we have applied is, uh, we're going to apply color, choosing a red color, a range of the red color, and a system uh, will show you, uh, you know, a red object. In our uh, case, it's a red car that crossed the line in a given direction in just in a matter of seconds. And, you know, and it, it could be uh, like a month's uh, depth archive, and, uh, you know, you can find a certain object you've been looking for in just a matter of seconds. So uh, now we have created a zone and want to find uh, a multiple object appearance uh, in the zone. 
And after setting this, uh, you know, parameters, uh, we can see uh, a search results. So now we're going to uh, press the search button and uh, indicate number of uh, objects or people we're looking for. And we see that uh, the system exactly detected uh, a moment where uh, four people appeared uh, in this specific zone. And uh, yeah, and the one more case. Uh, now we have created, we're going to create a zone. Um, actually, a couple zones, yeah, a couple zones. And uh, we want to find an object movement from, you know, one to another zone. So as you can see on the screen, we have, uh, we're going to have right now search results where uh, a certain object passed from one zone to another zone after we uh, click the search button. So, yeah, so we can see and we can play the video in the archive and we see that uh, the blue car uh, went from zone A to uh, zone B. And uh, yes. And again, we're applying an extra filter. Now we want to uh, check only for the human that moved from zone A to zone B. So again, we'll go to the archive and we we'll play the video and we see the instance with the, with, with the, with the, with the people that are going there. So uh, this is just a few examples, but you can have many uh, different scenarios depending on your needs and requirements. You know, you can, uh, you can uh, specify search criteria like a motion in area, line crossing, loitering, abandoned objects, and many others. And at the same time, you can apply uh, different filters uh, to your search results like uh, size of the object, color, uh, type of the object, speed of the object movement, and uh, some others. Okay, this is another powerful investigating feature that we're about to release. It also uses neural network algorithm to identify visually similar objects. And uh, number one application for this uh, feature, uh, you know, we think that it's searching for people that uh, look similar to a certain set of parameters. Uh, but this algorithm can be applied not only to human, uh, we can also use it in detect, you know, uh, similarity in, uh, of other objects. Uh, time compressor, another useful feature that may be very helpful while, you know, while working with, uh, with the large archives. Uh, again, let me play the video and see how uh, this feature works. So uh, time compressor allows operators to set a, you know, a time range for a video footage and get a short video clip of, uh, of all moving objects in the scene. You know, objects and events captured at, uh, at the different times are displayed simultaneously and uh, when you when you actually spot an object of your interest, you can click on object and uh, play a video in, in archive. And we think that uh, this feature is ideal for viewing large archives with a relatively few motion events. So basically, instead of you know spending hours going through uh, a footage, you can find the uh, event in just a matter of uh, seconds. Okay. Uh, Lastly, I would like to demonstrate a few cases done by us around the world, uh, you know, with use of advanced analytics, smart forensic search, and uh, different type of uh, integrations. I'll be just scrolling down. And uh, up till today, we have done, you know, tens of thousands of projects around the globe uh, based on our software, uh, you know, of a different scale and uh, complexity. And one important thing that I want to mention, uh, without our technology partners that are here today, many of those projects would be hardly achievable. And uh, thanks to our joint solutions that makes our system, you know, so flexible and technologically advanced. And because of that, uh, if our customers have some uh, not ordinary project requests, Accents of Team always happy to help with them, uh, you know, with them. And often where others say that uh, they are not able to complete, uh, you know, or cover certain requirements, we're there to help and satisfy our customers, often, uh, you know, offering the best possible solution for them. Uh, in combination with our hardware uh, partners. So uh, I would like to say thank you for your attention. And uh, I think uh, we can have a few questions from audience. Uh, Kate, if you could uh, please help uh, me with just picking some interesting questions, that would be, be great. Certainly. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, we have a few interesting question, questions. Mm -hmm. Here's the first one. You mentioned that neural network is not a miracle. So how do you define what is achievable and what cannot be achieved by means of neural network detection? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. Thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, well, mm, 
let's put it uh, you know as simple as possible uh, you know sometimes we uh, we we receive such requests that uh, are either very hard to achieve or you know probably uh, not really achievable uh, you know with the current technologies that we that we did we have that we provide and uh, and of course uh, you never know maybe tomorrow we'll bring uh, you know a new solution that easy can be solved this you know that that type of requests but regarding how to define what is uh, achievable today and what is not, uh, okay, I would put it this way. Uh, you know, if data sets sent to us is of a good quality and if objects that need to, you know, basically to be classified are well seen with a human eye, uh, that basically means that uh, a neural network will also deliver uh, a good accurate accuracy, you know, while, while trying to detect such objects. Oh, by the way, just an example, uh, I have recently received a request to uh, detect, uh, you know, a man holding a gun. So, you know, let's think of this case. Uh, you know, a person can be actually away from camera for as far as, I don't know, maybe 20, uh, 25 meters. And, uh, and the person himself is probably maybe 5 to 7% out of the whole frame. Uh, so we can definitely recognize him as being a human uh, by means of uh, neural analytics, but the gun probably cannot be seen, uh, you know, at all in this scenario. So, uh, you know, it's obvious that this is a very challenging task for a neural network. I'm not saying it's not possible, but, uh, you know, we're talking uh, here about accuracy and uh, most likely it's not going to be uh, very good. And another problem uh, is to catch many cases, you know, uh, of uh, you know, of men walking in front of the camera with a gun. So it's really, it really depends on, you know, several factors, yeah. Great, thank you. Here's another question. What kind of AI analytics has been deployed by your company apart from what was shown here? Okay, uh, again, thanks for the question. Um, well, apart from those mentioned uh, here, we have, uh, uh, we have developed a vehicle detection, for example, uh, then we have a motorcycle detection uh, that we used uh, in the safe city in Malaysia, uh, you know, that works along with our traffic monitoring system. What else? Uh, so, yeah, we have a bicycle detection, uh, this project done in Singapore. Uh, so there were areas where cyclists are, you know, restricted to be at, and once the system detects the bicycle, it gives, it gives an alarm. Um, what else? Okay, yeah, another example, uh, railroad maintenance company, uh, they wanted to count, uh, you know, how many chain wheels pairs were uh, served, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, what else was there? And they, uh, well, yeah, they also wanted to you know duration of service and uh, compliance to safety procedures. So uh, we've also used our uh, neural filter to do that. Uh, another example from Kenya, uh, there was a, there is a gas bottle filling station uh, and they requested to count number of, uh, you know, gas bottles. And the problem they faced, uh, you know, there are, there were several conveyor belts that uh, moved, you know, the, these gas, biggest uh, bottles, delivery trucks, uh, but somehow, uh, you know, sometimes they got stolen. And that's why the customer asked us to build an automatic gas bottle counter. Again, this is just a, you know, a few examples that came to my mind right away, and definitely there are uh, there are more cases there. And uh, Kate, I think we should go with uh, one more, and then uh, we can uh, start the next presentation. Okay, here's a very practical question: Where do you have presence in Asia Pacific region? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for the question. We have a uh, we have a regional HQ in Singapore, and uh, we also have offices in. Um, uh, in South Korea, in, uh, in Shanghai, in, uh, in Hong Kong, Malaysia. Uh, we recently set up the office in Indonesia and we are setting up office in India as well uh, this month and hopefully it will be you know, up and running uh, in July. Uh, you can always visit our website as well and find detailed information on, you know, on, on location and offices uh, around the world. And uh, apart from also uh, our uh, offices, uh, we are represented in many other countries by our partners. Again, you can visit the partners, uh, you know, partners section of our website and uh, pick the country that you're interested in. Great, thank okay, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for interesting questions. Uh, now we have a next presentation by Intel. Eric, please. Sure. Okay. Yep. 
thank thank you Mohamed. It's really good show and tell presentation. I see a lot of demo really good uh, and uh, welcome all uh, to join today's uh, webinar, uh, particular for today's uh, Asia time show. Before I go to detail, so let me share with you one quick story. So you know, in COVID nineteen now, uh, maybe not good to go to some public transportation. So recently, I drive my car uh, at night one day uh, to one of the junction in uh, in the city, and then when I pass that junction, I suddenly see and realize there's a fresh little traffic light. So I really sure I didn't drive so fast at that junction. So then I think about that. So let me drive that junction again, and then the fresh again. So I so sounds ridiculous. I'm not so fast. So then I try to repeat and go to the same junction again, and that is fresh three times. So I totally not feel good about this. I really don't think that is a right thing to do. So let me do one more time, fourth time, and fifth time, and that's a fresh. You know, two weeks after, I got five tickets. So the ticket said that you operate the car at that junction without safety belt and also facial mask. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you to John today's section. Uh, this is a little bit a joke, uh, maybe uh, put it seriously. For, for me today, I try to spend about 10 to 15 minutes to do one thing is to introduce you about the edge or vision acceleration products from Intel with our partner. And hopefully you can develop or deploy your solution uh, better in the video analytics uh, markets. Uh, next page, please. Okay, let's talk about the trend and then the challenge and then what is the solution. I see some of the questions in the Q&A already asked what exactly the hardware behind the scenes. Okay, I think first of all, we know the trend. The trend is, we, you know, well, now we have about 43 AI tasks should be taking place in the edge versus cloud in 2023, 43%, which is more than almost 50% half. According to the ABI research, you know the reason, right? The latency, bandwidth, security, and connectivity. Okay, but the challenge we are facing all today is to run the AI analytics, just what uh, Mohammed showed, require a lot of computing resources. And for really practical to, to have that kind of capability, so to uh, running without a speech, uh, I mean, special accelerator may be not quite possible, particularly for the channel will be up to more than 10 to 20 channels, okay? So that's why, cut to the chest, this slide I'm showing here is how, what we're working closely with ExoSoft, and they are doing that, uh, all the workload he just showed, and uh, put their model or new networks using our tools called OpenMino. I will talk about that more later. The tools is helping the model that has been shown to be optimized, can be run on the Intel Mobitis VPU accelerator card, which is the one I'm showing in the middle uh, of the slide, which is one of the example. That can run, the example show is up to handling over 65 channels for behavior analytics. So the rest of the slide, I'm gonna do three things. One, what can we be considered to enhance our computing resources at the edge for uh, video analytics? Two, what tools and hardware available today that can be optimized to running the inferencing workload uh, uh, in the hardware? And then three, of course, good to show some performance or solution that expect into the market. So next page, please. Okay, one, what can be considered to enhance our computing resources at the edge? I think that is a billion dollar question that everybody have a hungry resources power requirement. So I think this is a good example, I believe uh, what uh, we can see so far. Uh, typical example, most of the people connect those uh, camera or audio or whatever sensor to the edge server. Uh, today, like where, whether you call that as NVR, let uh, video recorder or AI box. So that is the typical setup right now. And obviously, most of the cases you are using the, the, the server that's using uh, the CPU, okay? So what I recommend is three steps to um, enhance the resources. One, first of all, understanding your performance target or say, for example, how many cameras you're connecting to your server. Okay, what kind of application you're looking for? Like the example, I just mentioned the story. You're checking how many people wear the mask or what? What is the frame per second you're looking for? That kind of requirement you need to be clear first. Second step, second step is the two tools I would talk more, which is called Intel Distribution of Open Windows Toolkit. That toolkit is basically to optimize the software that you can use 
to be running on existing hardware, which is the CPU or the integrated graphic already in your MVR today. You don't need to buy anything as long as you are running your analytic software. You can run that uh, 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 by the open window, optimize, and then run that on your existing hardware, which is CPU and, 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 and graphic card already. Okay, I mean integrated graphic. And then to certain extent, you can already see the performance gain. Say for example, with the open window optimization, maybe just for example, running the Google that uh, using our core i5 processor, maybe today with the open window will be about 15 to 20 frames per second. With open window optimization, maybe up to 80 or 200 frames per second. This is one of the example you can see the performance gain. And the first step is, okay, if you see the performance not still good enough or you need more. So the suggestion here is to add the vision accelerator card. And for us, we have two models. One is using our FPGA processor. Two is using our uh, Movitas VPU processor. I will talk more later. And in terms of the accelerator card for using VPU, Movitas VPU, we have a different version, either with one VPU, two VPU, four VPU, or even eight VPU. And back to the example I just mentioned, if you're running the, like the Google Net uh, uh, new network model, that can uh, uh, running the, uh, the, the speed up to uh, over 600 frames per second as a reference, okay? So the, I think the key message of, the, of this slide is about, uh, you can start to uh, use your existing solution, I mean the hardware, to step-by-step -step invest to meet your requirement. So that's the recommendation. So next page, please. Okay, so now the number two, what tools or hardware are available today? So let me talk about the tools first. Tools I already mentioned many times, which is called OpenMino. And um, what is this and how does that do? Let me tell you, okay. Uh, this is a kind of free uh, tools that you can download uh, under our developer community or even from the open source. And uh, that is particular use for us to use for our different architecture like the CPU, GPU, and also the VPU uh, and FPJ. So far, since we launched 2018, uh, number of developers download our tools is over six times already from, last, uh, from 2018 to 2019. And over 100 partners, including like Exosoft, are already using OpenMino to optimize uh, their new network or application to run on our architecture, which is over 100 partners already. And then uh, for OpenMino, also being uh, awarded as a 2019 Vision Product of the Year, one of them. So you ask me, so what does that do? So three step, uh, which, which is the summary here, actually uh, can do more, but high level one is build, two is optimize, and three is deploy. Build, so for the setup, so they of course get the um, uh, different media, whether that's video or picture or the audio from different device, which is on the left-hand side. And then at the same time, also get the, your trained model. Okay, the trained model either on different framework, you, you name it, Cafe or Tencent Pro, whatever. That the autom uh, open window, that can optimize the trained model to be into a two files. The, call, the files we call that intermediate representation. That two files, eventually that will be going to first step, which is deploy. That file already optimized, have the patch to make sure that can be optimized to run on different architecture, architecture like the CPU, uh, uh, integrated graphic, and also VPU and FPGA, as I just mentioned. Okay. On top of that free uh, step, two more things I want to highlight is one, they do have the user interface. We call that a deep learning workbench. Basically, they are doing all the user interface for you to do all the fine tuning and performance based on different parameter or batch size, whatever. Okay. And also, for those new developers to use these tools, we also have a lot of the example, the model example for different applications that you can run immediately as a reference. And uh, so you may, someone might just ask, what, what is the na full name of uh, OpenVINO if you haven't tested before? OpenVINO stands for Open Visual Inferencing Neural Network Optimization. So you can tell that is more particular for the inferencing part of the AI for you to optimize the um, neural network. Okay. In short, this mess key message of this slide is the benefit of the OpenVINO tools is a fee for you to download and uh, many people are already using and um, for the developer, particular for you, you don't need to rewrite your uh, or train, retrain your model that can apply the open window to uh, run on different architecture from Intel. Okay, so next page, please. 
So what hardware available for us to optimize in the inferencing workload uh, from Intel? So uh, I think most of you already, as I said, uh, typical using uh, the CPU in the server already. So today we offering top to bottom CPU uh, for you to uh, consider. Of course, from the entry level, we have Atom, uh, which is maybe think about to accommodate uh, less than 64 camera channel input. Mainstream, we have the core uh, processor, and that can be thinking about to handle more than 64 camera input stream. And then for the high end, we have the Xeon, and we'll talk more later, which is can handle more than 128 camera channels. And also in on top of that, particularly on the Edge AI and um, uh, the, the vision uh, the processing. So we have the uh, VPU, vision processing unit called uh, Intel Mobitus VPU. Uh, that particular running, uh, I mean, designed for uh, 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 new network uh, inferencing and also the imaging processing. I try to highlight three more things to you is the feature to um, the, that we design, uh, that architecture is good for uh, uh, visual uh, analytics. Uh, one, you can see that uh, in the bullet of uh, Xeon and also some in the core is the core deep learning boost. Basically, that is the design that running some uh, multiple uh, uh, analytics or real network uh, operation into a uh, more condensed way that can speed up the performance. And of course, we have the integrated graphic to running those uh, video pipeline faster. And also, as I said, under the VPU architecture, uh, that is dedicated design for the new network inferencing. That is called a uh, dedicated new compute engine. That is the engine inside the VPU that helping uh, the uh, new network running much faster. I see someone just raise hand. Okay. Uh, please put some question in the chat room maybe we can handle later. And also, um, I have my colleagues also, Belinda, also can help uh, to answer some of the question. So back to this slide, I think the key message I want to share with you all uh, is from Intel hardware-wise. Uh, we're working with different parlor and later on we can hear more from Lightdale and also CK. From CPU, we have Dr. Bottom uh, offering and also we also have end-to-end uh, -end offering, which is uh, maybe you can think about the Movidus VPU can be put that into the camera and also for the edge server and also for the network uh, accelerator card I just mentioned uh, for us to think about to enhance our uh, computing power uh, for uh, new network inversing. Next page, please. So what will be the performance and solution expect? So this page I would like to do is, you know, scalability is cannot be just rely on the hardware architecture, but also should be for software architecture. So I think what Intel does today is trying to telling you that we do have both, okay? And this page, just an example to illustrate uh, the point here is, say most of the cases you are already using our first generation Xeon processor. Uh, and at that moment, maybe you're using the open window to optimize the inferencing new network that will be one next performance. Using the same hardware, first generation Intel uh, Xeon processor, but if you have using the latest, actually not latest, last year, Opamino released one, can already optimize the new network running 2x faster using the existing architecture. If you further um, upgrade uh, to using our latest um, gen second generation Intel Xeon scalable processor, we used to call that Cascade Lake. As I said, they have some functionality like the uh, deep learning boost. With the latest uh, open window, the performance will be compared with the first one to 25x times uh, faster. So that's already a big improvement uh, for you to consider. So I think the key message for this slide is to, uh, we offer the performance what you need and have a good uh, investment protection. So next page, please. Uh, next page, please. Ah, okay, so that could be uh, my last slide. And uh, as a conclusion, if you are the developer or SI, uh, I highly recommend you to join our community called AI in Production. Uh, and that community, you can see it, we do have a lot of the uh, reference design and also the like the analytics reference uh, ready kit, which is one of them is from Exosoft that they have the video surveillance and analytic kits over there you can use. 
and uh, also other hardware vendor solution uh, in our community, uh, including the accelerated cut I just mentioned. So I think the benefit for all of you is the streamline the post solution bundling process, and also we can let you complete your IoT solution and improve the ease of the purchase. And of course, good protection for you to invest with your customer. So I think that's all I want to say in terms of from hardware side, from Intel, Intel side, how we work with Patla to offer you a better solution from uh, video analytics in uh, uh, deep learning uh, video analytics. Okay, so thank you very much. Back to uh, Case and Mohamed. Just thank you. Minutes. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Eric, for a very informative presentation. I just want to add that uh, neural network acceleration devices were successfully deployed in, in multiple projects already along with our AI analytics and customers coming back uh, to us with very positive feedback. Uh, Kate, are there any questions? Um, actually, we have answered all the questions in writing, so I okay. think we could proceed. Sure, good, good. All right, so um, let's move forward and we have a next presentation by Dale Harjit, please. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, just a second. Yep, thank you so much, Mohamed. Um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can see it. Are you able yes, to see yeah. my screen? Yes, yes, it's on. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present. Um, um, you know, at, at Dell Technologies, our focus is aggregating our, um, you know, our technologies with, with our partner technologies and bringing them to market. I was noticing there were lots of questions about how we can, how we can implement these solutions. So hopefully in our presentation, you'll get some answers to that. Um, I'm going to talk about our digital cities, um, you know, uh, initiative. Uh, this is the terminology we use for our smart cities business. Uh, and in that, you know, specifically, we're going to talk about some of the use cases that we have jointly uh, taken to market recently uh, with partners like Accenture. Uh, so a little bit of an overview about who we are and what's our focus, what's our vision within Dell Technologies. Uh, think of the Digital Cities Initiative as a startup within Dell Technologies where we bring together all of our allied organizations together to offer a um, ready solution. Now, no one company can do everything, so we work with partners such as Accentsoft to combine their intellectual property with our intellectual property and take it to market as a complete solution stack. So, what is our, our city customers, our, our enterprise customers do not configure the solution themselves. We've done some heavy lifting and accordingly said uh, beforehand. Um, so in our, in our focus in, uh, in digital cities, it is about moving from infrastructure to outcomes. And that's what we, that's what we work on um, day in, day out. Our current focus is around safe cities, uh, urban mobility and citizen health. That's what we are currently uh, taking to market as the ready solution stack. In the future, we plan to introduce eGov and, and sustainability and resilience uh, solutions. Uh, but as part of these, I'll take you through a little bit of more detail on what those solutions are able to do and, and how we've sort of developed them. Um, remember what I said earlier, we, we don't do everything. We work with partners such as Accentsoft so that our customers can get a ready solution stack. Um, what is underneath those three um, solution stacks that I mentioned? If we were to drill down on safe cities, our focus is essentially around campus safety, safe cities and homeland security. Um, so what, what does that really mean? These are different use cases that we've developed uh, underneath these particular verticals or sub verticals. And from the solution that you have from Dell Technologies, uh, that includes not just the infrastructure from Dell Tech and the software from Dell Technologies, but also the video management systems, the video analytics software from Accentsoft, as well as the integrated operations command and control for alerts and for um, you know, workflow and SOP execution. So it's a complete solution from hardware, software, 
and all we need is a local system integrator could be your preferred or we could bring the person to the table for integration into your legacy systems or if it's a greenfield project then implementation on the ground and so in this kind of a solution uh, there are three t-shirt sizes or three capabilities the first is campus safety i'll go into a little bit of detail in a subsequent slide um, there is a, a much larger deployment such as safe cities and then finally, in terms of homeland security, some superlative capabilities on triangulation of data streams and how we can bring all of that together. Uh, in urban mobility, our focus is around traffic safety and enforcement. Um, so things like red light violations, speed violation, how do we work with uh, customers in the countries to help them with improving safety on their roads and their highways? Uh, by democratizing these technologies and, and helping those customers uh, to buy ready solutions from one vendor rather than trying to put it together themselves. Uh, the second solution stack is around adaptive traffic light systems. And this is more about using analytics to determine which way the traffic is moving and accordingly change the timing of the traffic lights. Uh, the third category of uh, solutions is around predictive traffic simulation and planning and that is more in terms of planning for the future so if you have a project to um, convert a dual carriageway into a single carriageway or planning to expand the road network or build a new flyover or an underpass how can dell technologies help you to plan uh, to predict what will be the impact of that expansion or what is the impact of that addition to the road network on the overall traffic most often than not we see many of the countries solving one particular section of the road but the impact on the other aspects of the road could be uh, not predictable and that's where we come in to help the cities plan uh, what would be the outcome of um, of that particular move uh, as in building a flyover or building an underpass uh, and it doesn't have to be that permanent it could also be in terms of uh, if there is a VIP event or there's a concert in the city or a sports event in the city, how can we work with the with the town council to better manage the road network, etc. Uh, and then finally, on citizen health, the um, the solutions that we offer are starting with Edge, which is uh, the triad solution to check elevated skin temperature. The second is around contact tracing and monitoring. So how do we use technology to be able to administer stay-at-home notices or isolation and quarantine cases? The third is an epidemic response center, which is a situational awareness uh, custom designed for managing the epidemic. So if you're a large enterprise with multiple facilities like offices, factories, retail outlets, and the likes of those warehouses, how do you manage what's happening in each one of those facilities from a pandemic standpoint? And then finally, with our colleagues in VMware and Pivotal, we work on a predictive model uh, modeling for customers who are interested in, um, you know, sort of doing some prediction analysis of based on current infection rates and based on current testing rates, where do we think the, uh, the number of infections will be in about two weeks time or even later? this gives the city better uh, you know better tools to plan um so that's the framework but in addition to that we also have a accelerator platform that integrates all of the different legacy and future uh, use cases into a single visualization and data analytical tool uh, so as to not have siloed use cases but really have a aggregation model where all the databases can be hosted in a data lake or a video lake uh, environment and then the command and control essentially looks at how to share some of those alerts and triangulate the data so that's the accelerator platform that we offer again with the partner of dell technologies um, so go to uh, citizen health. Uh, the first one, like I mentioned, is EDGE, which is the capability to triage. So if you're looking at returning to site, if you're looking at reopening your facilities, how do you get back to site? How do you ensure that you provide a safe working environment uh, to your employees, visitors, and vendors? Um, and so you would have seen this across um, all facilities now. You've got a man behind a tripod uh, with a camera pointing in the direction of the people walking. Um, and those are the kind of solutions that we are seeing across the globe. 
but unfortunately those solutions are not it grade they have no archival capability the accuracy rate is suspect uh, and really from a privacy and a compliance standpoint uh, there isn't much to talk about either and so the solution that we built with accents of help is to essentially provide a lot more intelligence and alert uh, capability and so it's quite autonomous so it's more like uh, uh, you know, a thermographic camera with an Accentsoft intelligence software, video analytics, uh, run on a Dell Edge device that essentially provides for a low manpower or no manpower solution uh, to be able to screen people who are entering your premises. And how do we do that? We do that through multiple ways. One of them is to integrate this with access control systems uh, so that when a person with elevated temperature is trying to enter, we lock the um, turnstile or we lock the entrance gate so that that person cannot enter. And hence you save a lot on manpower. You don't need to have a person standing behind a tripod because that, that is very, very expensive. Most people don't realize that. So at Dell Technologies, we've combined a, um, a Mobotics, a brand of camera out of Germany uh, with an accents of software and a Dell Edge device to provide a IT grade solution for customers that could be integrated to legacy systems such as your cctv for instance for better track and trace as well as integration with access control systems provide a capability for mass detection and so on and so forth so a lot of capabilities currently as well as in the future can be run off the same infrastructure and that's where the dell technology solution differs from uh, the run of the mill kind of solutions that you find on the street in contact tracing and stay-at-home administration, the capability is around ensuring that we can um, that we can support organizations and cities and campuses uh, to identify um, uh, you know symptomatic cases and then to monitor their performance or monitor their um, their position on a 24 by 7 basis across wherever they may be uh, by using technologies which are non-app based and so using all kinds of other tools where we can actually have the citizen respond back on a mobile app in terms of what their symptoms are, what their position is, have they gone and got themselves tested, and all of that kind of uh, workflow issues can be resolved through contact tracing and stay-at-home administration. The alternative is for individual employees to report back as to how they're feeling via email, etc., which from a data aggregation standpoint is not uh, the ideal case. What you need is structured inputs coming back to you. If you have 40, 50, 500 employees that are isolated because they've come in contact with someone infected in the factory or in the office, uh, then you need a very structured mechanism by which you can manage their, uh, the process. Uh, the pandemic response center is really in a command and control uh, solution that allows you to um, manage every aspect of the current situation. Uh, everything from number of tests done to number of um, hospital beds that are free uh, to the number of uh, ICU beds that are occupied, uh, the resource uh, mobilization that you currently have, all of those alerts in real time coming on a single pane of glass, uh, 360 degree view so that you can make decisions in a, in, a, in a more structured and an effective manner. Rather than getting bits and pieces of information from all over, it's much better to consolidate all of that in a command and control kind of environment. Uh, and then you can initiate workflow processes, tickets, et cetera, giving people specific instructions on what needs to be done. We can also integrate with social media sentiment analysis. So you can actually see the chatter and analyze what's happening on social media with respect to your current uh, measures and appropriately take actions as in improving communications. In predictive modeling, we work with cities to help them um, drive the uh, prediction around the, um, uh, where the infections are going uh, based, like I said, on current testing models and current uh, positive results uh, and be able to help them design a data science model that they could use for their own analysis for the future. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm gonna to go to um, urban mobility solution stack. And that is really in terms of, um, um, you know, in terms of uh, how we can help, um, uh, you know, some of the cities and, and countries in urban mobility solutions. 
Uh, so like I said, the first use set of use cases is around road safety and enforcement. And that is more around um, typically red light violations at road intersections, uh, auto detection of road violations such as lingering or illegal parking. Uh, also integrating that with the motor vehicle registry for e-tickets and e-fines, uh, lane violations, speed violations, and the likes of those. So that's all under road safety and enforcement capability. Remember, like I said earlier, the solution is an integration of third-party software with Dell Technologies, hardware, and third-party infrastructure. So sensors and edge devices could be third-party in this case. So we combine all of that to provide a solution to customers. The second big area around use cases is road traffic monitoring. So real-time traffic flow and density monitoring, vehicle counting, vehicle queue monitoring, uh, looking at vehicle uh, types, so to analyze what kind of vehicle, uh, what's the vehicle composition in the particular area, as well as identify vehicle of interest using ANPR or color make model kind of attributes as what Mohammed was presenting earlier, uh, use some of those tools to be able to analyze that. And uh, the third bucket is road traffic simulation and planning. So, you know, looking at what if kind of scenarios and, uh, and what could we help in terms of better planning uh, for expansion of road network, changing dual carriageways into single carriageways, uh, you know, all kinds of various scenarios where before you take the action, um, we could actually help the city in terms of doing some predictive analysis of what's happening. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be permanent. It could be around a sports event or entertainment event where you expect more than normal traffic in a particular section of the city. How can we help you plan better for the future? Uh, and then finally, in terms of our safe city uh, ready solutions. So like I said, three categories, campus safety, city safety, and homeland security. In campus safety, the focus is around high value asset protection. So this could be an airport, this could be a, a high security area, could be a um, central business district, a township or a refinery or a manufacturing outlet, a manufacturing facility. So really any kind of campus which requires protection, uh, including perimeter protection, uh, looking at uh, you know, uh, uh, worker safety, as well as um, you know, uh, looking at intrusion detection, for instance, or uh, or those kind of uh, kind of very basic scenarios uh, where we can actually uh, help campuses to make the area a lot more secure. In city safety, it gets a little bit more advanced, a little bit more complex, where we're looking at uh, you know violence detection, such as screaming, shouting, or gunshot detection, like Mohammed said. Uh, but also in terms of uh, general situational awareness, uh, you're looking for fire or you're looking for acts of arson uh, or also looking for person of interest or vehicle of interest in a city environment where a vehicle that's been stolen, how do you detect it in, in, uh, in lesser time than what is happening today? So a lot of use cases in city safety. Uh, and then finally in Homeland Security, um, like I said, triangulation of a lot of data uh, from different sources, including optical sensors, uh, telco data, as well as vehicular data movement, et cetera, you know, triangulating that and narrowing down on suspects in a much faster way, uh, and then being able to run some great analytical tools such as video synopsis, ANPR, and the likes of those. So a lot of capabilities around, um, you know, safe cities. We, we do a lot of business with customers across the globe. And my last slide is really your question in terms of what exactly, uh, what exactly is Dell's role in this? Like we said, you know, our focus is to deliver a customer-ready solution. So we test and validate hardware, third-party software, and the Dell tech infrastructure and this and software. Uh, we bring them into a lab, put them to the paces, et cetera. We ensure that there are t-shirt sizes available so you don't have to go for a large investment upfront. You can start with something small and then scale up. Uh, everything we do is open standards. That's what we stand for. And so integration through APIs with other um, you know, other uh, legacy systems or future systems is a, is a given. Uh, we ensure that the software partners we work with, the hardware providers that we work with are security and privacy compliant. Many of the customers have very strict criteria around 
uh, how we deal with the data, how is that uh, information masked from people who are not authorized to view it and so on and so forth. So all of that is also built in at the design stage. And what that really means is speedy deployment for a lot of our customers. Rather than trying to put it together and trying to do some guesswork, Dell Technologies has done the heavy lifting and, and that means that you could actually deploy much faster. Uh, the second is we work with partners such as Accentsoft that are validated and we've, we've obviously selected them based on you know, what they stand for, global expertise and, and very deep expertise in what they do. Uh, and that sort of gives a peace of mind to customers as well to say, uh, you know, one at one end is Dell Technologies and at the other end, you've got a partner like Accentsoft uh, with the backing of Intel and others that essentially provides a very strong uh, collaborative effort to solve customer problems. And that is a really strong message for many of our customers that they like, and that's why uh, we've done a fair amount of projects together. Um, so that's my last slide. Um, happy to answer any questions if you may have, um, but if not, I will hand it back to Mohammed and Kate. Uh, thank you very much, Arjit, for a very good presentation. Uh, just, uh, just to want to add from my side that there are many initiatives and uh, projects done jointly with the Dell uh, using their hardware platforms and our software solutions, which actually creates a powerful synergy. So uh, yeah, Kate, uh, are there any questions? Uh, Tim is working well, all the questions okay. answered, so I think we okay. can. All right, all right. Uh, in this case, uh, we have a next one, Seagate presented by Denny. Hi, Denny. Hi, Mohammed. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. You're sharing your screen, right? Yep, let me okay, do this. Good. Can you all see my screen? Um, yes, it's on. Okay, we're ready to roll. Okay, so hi everyone, thanks for your time to join the webinar today. Uh, it was a pleasure to be uh, part of this webinar. So after all the, uh, the presentation from the partners and to talk about AI, talk about, talk about uh, solutions, uh, my session, I'm gonna focus a little bit more about data, right? So that's where the, the, the key topics on storage uh, that we will be focusing on. So today my focus on uh, the topics will be why and where network storage should be used in video surveillance and video screen surveillance application. Okay. Well, as you know, data is key, right? As, and as you might be aware, video data continues to increase every minute, every day, driven by the fact that um, there's a right now a lot more people, um, more and more people start to utilize more video data to make, uh, to deliver insights and make decisions. Well, I want to share with you um, about an, an late, uh, a recent report that we did with IDC. So this should, be, should not be a, re a secret that data is actually growing rapidly. From the recent report, right, that we collaborated with IDC called Data Age 2025. Um, in fact, this data, uh, this report, you can actually download it from the website. It's available for your reference. It shows that the data sphere, so IDC call it a data sphere. As IDC to refers to it, will grow from 175 zettabytes Worldwide, worldwide up from 33 zettabytes in 2018. So that's a huge growth. Just a set of context, what is zettabytes? A lot of us know what is gigabytes, terabyte, but what's zettabytes? So just to let you know, one zettabyte equals to one billion terabytes. So 175 zettabytes is 175 billion terabytes. That's a lot of data, right? Well, while we know that not all the data that's created that will be stored but as, you, as we see, the data becomes more and more valuable because of a lot of this uh, data collections from devices like IoT devices, cameras. More people is going to um, utilize the data to make uh, insights, to deliver insights. So that's why storage will become a key uh, consideration that a lot of the application, in fact, projects will be looking at. Um, we get involved a lot in a lot of uh, partnership with uh, the VMS vendors, as well as uh, ExxonSoft and also some other uh, video surveillance uh, players in the market. So in fact, one of the key, uh, if you look at your project deployment, one of the key um, pain points and one of the bigger piece of the cost is really on the storage side because a lot of customers, they would like to make sure that they can store the data for long and video retentions policies in most of the projects just continue to increase, right? Uh, in fact, um, we have partners in Middle East that needs three petabytes for, 
for, for, for simple stadium deep applications, which they need to store it for a long time. So all those data is becoming more and more critical. So basically we see from a storage medium perspective, we believe that majority of the storage requirement will still be, um, be residing on the hard drive, right? As you all know, I mean, video, su video surveillance is a very write intensive application, sequential write intensive application between the mediums of storage that's available, which is SSD, hard drive, optical, and tape. So a lot of the storage requirement will continue to, to deliver to uh, the, the, the hard drive um, as, a as a storage medium. With AI analytics widely adopted, we will also see a growth of real-time data creation happens. In fact, from the report, you will see that the real-time data growth will grow from 15% to 30%. So that means that a lot of the data, right, that, that created like from AI and all these things will, will continue to grow because as we see um, from the application right now, there's a lot of convergence happening, right? In fact, we talk about, I mean, just now our partners Dell talk about IT grade. So what is IT grade? So Traditionally, video surveillance, we are all very familiar with CCTV, with, with NVR, DVR, but with a lot of this technology converge, we are looking at something that is more, um, more tiered towards the IT infrastructures, adoption of IT technologies, right, that will require in the video surveillance space. All right, so, and I did see that mentioned that by 2025, 20% of the data created will be from IoT devices and security cameras. Well, as you all know, I mean, video, video cam, uh, IoT devices basically, or which is the fact is like gathering data. So they will actually create more and more um, use cases with, uh, with, with that. Yep, so the world is really changing the way they use video. So I won't go too details about this, but I mean, as Exxon, as Mohammed or even uh, Eric mentioned earlier on, there's a lot of changing on use cases and how people utilize, um, utilize um, uh, data today or, or video today, just like in the smart city, right? Data collected to use for improvement of efficiency and traffic utilization and management. And whereas in education, the data is used to improve student engagement and all those things. Whereas for manufacturing, today we talk about a lot of this um, video uh, that's being collected from productions, right? It's being used to analyze by Seagate, we have a very big footprint of uh, I mean, manufacturing globally. So we utilize a lot of this AI to train the model and to make sure that we, we, we detect the, 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 the issues with our drive and all those things on quality control. Okay, so when you talk about all this expansion of use cases, then we talk about what type of storage should you consider, right? A lot of the application today, when we talk to a lot of customers, you have a couple of options. So in a small applications, you will go for NVR or even smaller application, you will go for DVR, right? In a mid range application where VMS will start to be utilized, there'll be a lot of customers today that will utilize either appliance, which is a VMS on a server and storage. And even right now, there will be, there are a lot of also partners that utilize um, a server with a lot more data storage inside the, the server, which we call server storage. But there are always pros and cons um, when it comes to this type of solution. First of all, as we all know, IoT device, with the increase of IoT devices and number of cameras and retention rate and also resolutions and AI. So we need to have a storage solutions that will allow you to scale as you need. You need to be able to scale as you need. Secondly, because the data becomes so important, so there needs to be no single point of failure because the problem with uh, having everything on the server is obviously you, 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 a lot of VMS vendors can support a server failover, but obviously uh, with, a, with a storage with a high, high redundancy, dual controllers, it allows you to better protect your data. And third, performance when you increase your workload. And last but not least, offer lower TCOs. So for us, what we really want to do is um, to offer our solutions which deliver the throughput, the highest throughput performance for surveillance. As we all know, the workload in video surveillance is very right intensive, right? Even though there'll be more and more applications that we utilize video and utilize video as they need. For example, we saw just now like, a, I mean, like the time compressor. A lot of these are metadata, right? If you want to play back and search, there's a lot of data retrieval from the, from the, 
from a storage side. So we want to make sure that we deliver that performance and quality of service as well. Secondly, we want to make sure it's highly available, right, and to support that application. And last but not least is simplicity. Well, a lot of people, when, we, when you talk, talk about using enterprise class storage system, it, it needs to be easy to set up and easy to maintain. So one of the things that we, we, we would like to focus on is the simplicity and ease of uh, setup, right, that we, we, are, we are delivering. Okay, in the next two or three slides, I'm going to share with you um, briefly about the common use cases for external storage in uh, video surveillance. So if you ask, um, I mean, there are, the, there are four common use cases that we, that we, that we, when we work with customers, we are seeing them using uh, sand storage or what we call network storage. So the first one is mid-scale camera count, and this is usually a lesser camera count, but they need to retain the video for probably one to three months, but they need to scale. It starts small, scale later. The second application is long-term retention. Well, this, this can be a correction facilities. This can be, um, well, this can be a law enforcement. This can be a body cam type of application where we have customers requiring long-term long retention, like a year or two years type of data, right, due to compliance. The third type of use cases is high camera count, where typically is more than 500 cameras, but retention is probably about three months, right? And the last but not least is last deployment. This is very common when it comes to smart city. So Seagate, we are, we are, we've been involved in surveillance um, with a lot of the partners and very often we come across projects which we have 2,000 cameras, 5,000 cameras, but obviously not all the application should be centralized. So it's all separated on site. So there will be a lot of requirements on storage as the data being utilized, right? So why don't you just go through briefly about each use cases and how Seagate's solutions uh, fits in where. This is the first application, which is meet camera count. You have camera uh, connected to the server. It can be a VMS server with, with AI or in a separate server connected to our sand storage. So here what, I'm, what we are proposing is actually our uh, exhaust X rate based controllers sand storage. It's a 2U12 uh, sand storage that you can mix and match with either a 2U12 or a 5U84 a form factor, which allow you to scale. So each of the 2U12 can support 16 terabyte of the drive. So basically you can scale and you can, you can scale as you need in terms of expanding your video recording and also increasing the number of camera. Each of our controller can support sequential write of five by five gigabytes per second. So basically we have tested in some of, in some of the VMS, it could support well, on a typical 12 megabits per second camera count, right, we can support about 750 to 1,000 cameras. That is 4K type of workloads. So definitely allow our, our the application to scale and it allow, the, it allow data to be protected in those environments. Second type of usage is, of course, we, uh, we have an exhaust X584. So this is a one storage with 16 terabyte that allows you to go to about 1.6 uh, 1.3, 1.4 petabytes per box that you allow you to scale up to 5.3 petabytes. Uh, I mean, with all the storage connected. This is actually, I mean, because the, the main part of the, of the storage cost is on the drive. So definitely this is the part of a solution that we can offer in when it comes to solutions that require longer term retention, that, long, that requires lowest cost per gigabyte, right? When it comes to this type of application. By high camera count, as, as mentioned, this happens especially for certain smart city and safe city type of environment or a K-12 or universities where they have different sites with camera, like few hundred cameras connected to a server and then you have storage. Our storage allows you to scale and the last deployment as well. So obviously you can continue to scale and, and continue to scale as you need it when, when it comes to large deployment. Okay, this will be my last two slides. So. So what is Seagate doing? I mean, a lot of people know Seagate as, um, as a hard drive vendor, right? So what is, what is Seagate uh, got to offer when it comes to storage system? As I highlighted to, to, to all of you before on a couple of slides, we have a comprehensive portfolio of storage system that is enterprise class. Uh, and we are, trying, we are probably taking this opportunity to be able to share with a lot of our partners what we, what we have to offer in video surveillance. So when it comes to our portfolio on system, so this is on top, this is on top of our hard drive portfolio, right? All our products utilize um, Seagate latest technologies and latest uh, hard disk drive capacity. 
So today we have 16 terabytes. So most of our products can support higher 16 terabytes. If we have 18 terabytes or 20 terabytes, we will be the first to adopt all the highest capacity. So you can expect that we will be able to provide the, the lowest cost per gigabyte and the highest density per box when, when it comes to the solution. So in Seagate, we have three types or three flavor of offering here. We have a JBot, which you can connect directly to a server or connect it as an eBot as to a, to a SAN storage. We have an Exos X, which is our hybrid and all flash storage, uh, storage ar array. You can make it an all flash or you can make it a hybrid or you can just make it uh, purely a hard drive based sense block storage. And of course we have exhaust AP. AP application platform, it comes with two blade x86 server on top of our, our highest density um, uh, J, uh, platform, which is a 4U 100 drives. So in some of the application today, we are seeing more and more customers when it comes to bigger scale, multiple petabytes application. Some customers will start to actually explore into non-traditional architectures like software-defined storage, like um, object-based storage. So our Exos AP will basically uh, is a solution that you can consider for those type of applications. Yep, as I highlighted earlier on, why Seagate, right? I mean, what is Seagate going to do with enterprise data solution? So we are the only vertically integrated provider. So from the drive, from the component, to the controller, to the box, we actually built end to end, right? So we are uniquely positioned because we, I mean, on the drive perspective, there's only three players in the market. On the system storage perspective, um, we've been in, we, are, we have been in this industry for a long time. So basically there are a lot of partnership that we had with our partners. So if you look at the total, the size of the deployment as well, we have more than a million systems that are being deployed in, in the market today. If you are today working with a lot of these big brands uh, out there for data storage systems, the likelihood for you have used our product is very high because we, are, we, have, been, we have been shipping a lot of our products into this industry. So we have more than 30 years experience, we know storage, and then that's why basically we are, we are trying to build that and continue to deliver solutions to the, to the partners in, in the market. And when it comes to surveillance, well, we, we started surveillance 13, 13 to 14 years ago with a drive optimized for NVR, DVR. As the market evolved, I think that there will be a lot more opportunity when it comes to storage because the demands for storage continue to go, grow. The, the demand for higher capacity, higher density storage will continue to grow because a lot of the application will need longer term retention. This is my last slide. So Seagate understands, we understand how a video storage works. We understand the application. We, we, make, we have to make sure that our products is simple, simple built for non-IT users. We have to make sure that our, our product is, has the performance and the throughput to support multiple sequential recording and writing of the stream. We need to make sure that our products is flexible for the customers to choose whether to choose a 2U12 or mix with a 5U84. You want to scale, start small, grow bigger, or start small, continue gradually grow, or at the end of the day, it allows you to kind of mix and match. And the last but not least is the stability. Always on the stability, for, which is very critical for the video surveillance application. Okay, that's all. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone for your time. I'm, I'm not sure we have any questions. Uh, this is my email and uh, William's email. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us uh, an email or just let us know. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation, Danny. Uh, it was very good. Uh, just to add on, uh, being a major player in the storage segment, Seagate really have a range of AI tailored products that will complement any security solution. So yeah, Kate, uh, do we have any questions? As before, all the questions have been answered. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this case, we'll be wrapping up. Uh, all right, so thank you very much to our partners and all participants of the event. Uh, we're closing this webinar. I really hope that uh, it was an informative session for everyone. And uh, we definitely will be trying to do such events uh, more often. And uh, if you, know, you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact us uh, anytime. Uh, so, thanks again. Uh, great day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Bye-bye.